Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. This is Janine from Pangolin Photo Safaris. And with all these exciting news out there, with all the updated new cameras, especially the mirrorless cameras out there, I've had a few questions that I would like to get to the bottom two. What is a mechanical shutter versus an electronic shutter? And is one better than the other one? It is quite a technical subject. I'll try and break it down as easily as possible for you. So let's dive right into it. Before we get into the pros and the cons of a mechanical versus an electronic shutter, I would like to introduce you to the mechanisms behind it so that you can follow me better. A mechanical shutter in a DSLR camera is simply a curtain that opens and closes in front of the sensor in order to let light in onto the sensor, expose the sensor and close it off again. However, it doesn't go open like we would expect from a curtain. It actually goes up and down vertically to expose the sensor. I was actually able to capture the shutter of the 5D Mark III for you with 960 frames per second on my Samsung phone. And even that wasn't fast enough in order to make sure that you can properly see what is happening behind the lens. So let's just take a few frames from the video and have a look what goes on there. Number one, with a DSLR camera, the mirror needs to slide out of the way first so that the light can penetrate all the way through to the sensor. Then the front curtain opens, in this case by falling down, allowing light to enter. Thirdly, followed closely by the so-called rear curtain. Depending on how fast your shutter is, it follows faster or later. As you can see in the video here, the shorter the exposure time, the smaller the gap between the front and the rear curtain becomes. At 250th of a second, you will notice that the entire sensor is visible at some stage before the rear curtain follows again. That is also the reason why 250th of the second is usually the fastest that you can sync a flash to your camera to because as a flash goes off it is required that the entire sensor is visible at that stage so that it doesn't throw any shadows on your image. In mirrorless cameras however we have the disadvantage that we don't have a mirror to show us what's going on there. Therefore we need the sensor permanently open to send electronic signals to our viewfinder so we see a live view from what's going on in front of our lens. Because the sensor is originally open for the live view, we first have to close the shutter in preparation for an exposure when we use mechanical shutters on mirrorless cameras. Then only can the curtain open and close again. Not just does it take extra time, but it also creates extra movement and extra noise within the camera. Therefore, newer mirrorless cameras and even some DSLR cameras have adapted a new technology called electronic front curtain shutter. All that is really happening in that moment is that we don't need a front curtain to trigger the exposure. Instead, we have an electronic trigger that activates our pixels that are then terminated again by the rear shutter closing over the sensor. Last but not least, with mirrorless or any digital cameras that do not have a mirror, we also have the option for a completely electronic shutter. What happens is that the curtain becomes entirely obsolete. There is no physical barrier closing off the sensor in order to let light through and block it off again. Instead, we have all the pixels activated electronically, but instead of activating them all at once, it reads it line by line. Processes are getting faster and faster nowadays, but the entire process of reading each line individually can take up to 1 15th of a second, and is therefore still fairly slow. 
So let's get into the pros and the cons of a mechanical shutter versus an electronic shutter. But before I do, if this video is helpful to you, please don't forget to press the like button and just press subscribe to make sure you get notified whenever there's new content of ours coming out each Friday about photography. So with the technology advancing each and every day, I have guests ask me, is a mechanical shutter really still relevant in nowadays time? Do you need it in a mirrorless camera at all? And first and foremost, I want to make sure that we all understand that in a mirrorless camera, the mechanical shutter is not lacking because we took the mirror out. The mirror flopping up and the opening up of the front shutter is two different mechanisms, two different things all at once. So just because the mirror is gone now, we still need to open our curtain somehow in order to expose our sensor. Secondly, I assume you are here because you love wildlife photography in particular. And wildlife and sports photography especially push our cameras to their absolute limits. We need incredibly high shutter speeds to capture the movement and we often push our ISOs much further than in other fields of photography because we work with natural light, flash is often not an option and we can't choose where the animals are lying very often. Therefore, I want to discuss whether an electronic shutter is up for the challenge of wildlife photography. All right, let's first discuss what is great about the new electronic shutters. Most of the advantages actually have to do with the fact that there's simply no moving parts involved anymore. Number one, you have a lot more stability. Your cameras are not going to be affected by any moving parts slamming down at two thousandths of a second, for instance. And therefore, you avoid a little bit of vibration, which is known as shutter shock. It's actually a thing. However, shutter shock really only affects you when you shoot on fairly slow shutter speeds, somewhere between a fifth and a sixtieth of a second. That's when that vibration affects your image and can cause slight blurriness. Given that in wildlife photography, I always suggest that we shoot minimal our focal length if we can actually double our focal length. And we often shoot with telelenses in wildlife we really shoot as slow as a 60th of a second. Therefore, shutter shock is really not an option, even though we shoot with tele lenses. Secondly, and most obvious of course, is that an electronic shutter is silent. And silence is absolutely beautiful in wildlife photography. We don't disturb the animals so much because we don't have the curtain going cluck cluck actually twice because we have the front and the rear shutter coming. It often sounds like one sound because it happens so fast, but it does make noise. So that would be an advantage for wildlife. Thirdly, we have less moving parts that can break. Anything that moves and gets used over and over again has wear and tear. And shutters have an average lifespan, depending on your camera body, they can be between 150,000 all the way to the pro bodies that is more in the three, 400,000 region. But then the camera manufacturer doesn't guarantee anymore that the shutter can actually hold up all that use. Given that in wildlife photography, we often shoot on high continuous bursts. We really make use of our camera. Then it depends how often do you personally use it. But eventually you do run the risk of breaking your shutter. It breaks off, it breaks in half, um, the little arms on the side, the leverage mechanisms get stuck and you would have to replace it or figure if it's still worthwhile to actually replace it versus buying a new camera. It also becomes a little bit more difficult to judge the age of a camera or let's say it the other way around, your camera doesn't age because of a shutter being able to break. If you actually want to know how you figure out your shutter count of the camera, check out the link up here. It will give you a nice explanation in that regard. 
Last but not least, you can actually reach much faster shutter speeds with an electronic shutter. Even though the whole process is quite sluggish, you can reach up to 32 thousandths of a second with some of the mirrorless cameras. Can you imagine? Most DSLR cameras are limited to about 8 thousandths of a second of a shutter because you physically have to move a curtain and that has its limits. Do we really need to shoot that fast? In wildlife photography, we are limited by the light conditions and rarely can I afford to even shoot on eight thousandths of a second without blowing the roof off my eyes. So, so we are limited with how fast we can shoot. Maybe for hummingbirds, it might be nice to be able to shoot faster, but I don't see the huge urgency in it for wildlife. So you see there is quite nice advantages in having an electronic shutter and mirrorless cameras. But let's have a look what might not work so well with an electronic shutter. Most electronic shutters that are built into our modern electronic cameras and mirrorless cameras are called a rolling shutter because they read the pixels line by line on the sensor. And this process has some disadvantages as it takes, as I said, about average 15th of a second, some processes are faster. The last line is read much later and exposed much later than the first line. If you now have a very fast moving subject, like the drone blades, for instance, I know this is now not wildlife related, but it was something I could get a hold of easily and photograph and recreate for you guys. You can see here in the mechanical shutter on eight thousandths of a second, we have nice rotor blades visible. And here in the rolling shutter, we get really, really weird shapes because our last line is exposed in a completely different time than our first line. So every time we photograph fast moving subjects, and that is our goal in wildlife photography, really chases, hunts, birds in flight, fishing, all these sort of things, we run the risk of distorting our animal, especially if it is something moving horizontal. That is quite a huge risk to run. You might sit at your once in a lifetime sighting. You cannot recreate wildlife sightings. It is pure luck and you do not want your animal to be distorted. Secondly, not as important though, you have a similar problem shooting in artificial light. Once again, it's caused by the shutter not exposing everything at once. And if you shoot artificial light, artificial light sometimes pulses. Um, there's these tungsten lights, for instance, or in sports arenas. We don't notice it because our brain is actually quite clever and compensates for it. But the camera will pick up on it. So when the sensor is read line by line, the light conditions are not the same for each line as a light is pulsing. And then it creates something called banding, such as here. It looks like the exposure isn't even causing these funny stripes all the way across your picture. Not too relevant for wildlife photography, but something you need to keep an eye out if you shoot sports in the late evenings or even indoors. So while the electronic shutter certainly has a lot of lovely advantages, it is simply too risky to have a distorted animal in a really nice interactive wildlife scene. No photographer would take that risk, not if they shoot regularly and not if they are on the one trip throughout the year that they saved up for. So for wildlife photography, that can be a little bit of an issue. So why do camera manufacturers not simply create a shutter that can expose the entire sensor at once? Such a shutter actually exists. It's called a global shutter. And without going into too much technical details, because I would need a whole new tutorial for that, a global shutter requires an enormous amount of memory, pixel memory, in order to be able to expose and read the entire sensor in every single pixel at once. 
So as a result, you are going to create a sensor that is much more noise sensitive. So causing grain at lower ISOs much quicker and also a sensor that has less dynamic range. For wildlife photography, both crucial things and with the current technological advancements, I don't think any photographer would be willing to take such a trade-off simply to avoid a rolling shutter because we can avoid it with a mechanical shutter as well and not have the loss of sensor quality. Instead, it's amazing because research keeps on outdoing itself by producing ever faster processors to be able to handle our need for focusing speed, number one, our need for fast viewfinders, our need for fast shutters, especially electronic shutters. So the new Canon 1DX Mark III, for instance, has the Digic X processor, which is a phenomenal processor, being able to read the sensor line by line. It is a rolling shutter, but so fast that it becomes much less of a problem. So experts think that in the future with our technological advancements, the rolling shutter will become less and less of an issue. So what about the use of that so-called electronic front curtain shutter that I briefly mentioned earlier? Most mirrorless cameras have it, even DSLR cameras have it when you switch them onto live view and it's usually automatically turned on. Is there pros and cons? So you don't get any distortion like you do from a rolling shutter. However, the electronic front curtain shutter is known to make your background more crisp, more detailed. And in wildlife photography, photographers pay huge bucks to get the wide aperture lenses that create those beautiful smooth bouquets. So why ruin a bouquet? if you have a mechanical shutter. There's also some issues reported on really high shutter speeds, which we tend to achieve with wildlife photography. But overall, if need be, you can turn the electronic front shutter off. Would turning it off have a disadvantage? Well, there is a slight delay because you first have to actually close your sensor on a mirrorless camera before you can reopen it as previously explained. That creates extra movement, shouldn't be a problem in wildlife photography because you shoot on high shutter speeds and it creates extra noise. Well, you would have two clucks instead of just one cluck. I don't think um, it makes a huge difference. Either you make noise or you don't make noise. It, my 1DX Mark II is incredibly loud and I work with it because it produces phenomenal results. So again, in wildlife photography, I would probably tend to turn that electronic front cut shutter off as well, just to be secure. In conclusion, right now, today, with the cameras that are out on the market, I would suggest to use a very old fashioned mechanical shutter for wildlife photography to make sure you capture the movement without distortion and to make sure you get the best bouquet that's out there. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and it clarified some of these really technical details to you. I hope that I'll be able to welcome you soon in Botswana to put all our lessons to the test in the field. That's where it's the most fun. Bye bye.